waiting on this to show up for quite a while. You know, I even coincidentally enough have a Holly shirt on, so I look like a huge dork right now. So it took a really long time, as basically everyone knows a lot of the Holly ECUs were on back order. It took me forever to get a Dominator, but finally got it. And then it took me a few months to actually have space in my own shop to bring my own car in. But finally getting started on this thing. So problem number one is the actual throttle pedal that was used is not going to work with the Holly harness, which is fine. Actually, I kind of expected that. And one of my least favorite parts about driving this car is actually the way that the pedal is mounted. So this will just give me an opportunity to redo that all over again. And let's see, it's probably easier just to look through here. I was kind of dreading, back here is like where the OEM ECU is and essentially where all of the like kind of spliced in wiring, anything along the lines of that is down in there. So I was kind of dreading even looking under there because 99 out of 100 cars, if there's a panel where all the wiring takes place and it's hidden, uh, usually once you pull that panel up, it looks atrocious. But this is actually really nice. A majority of it just plugs in. And the CPE harness throughout the whole car is just actually real nice. So uh, that was a pleasant surprise. And I pulled the drive-by-wire harness back out. And now I'm going to start unplugging the main engine harness. This is unplugged. I'm just making sure that the... Uh, harness would plug into the throttle body, which it does. Um, I don't know why these hoses kind of bother me, so I'll probably redo those at some point. This, I don't know why, I can't tell you why, but I despise these 90 degree couplers, and uh, there really wasn't much of another option on this one, so I totally understand why it's there. But you don't see much of the engine bay in this, and kind of all you see is this intake. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of the way that looks, so we'll do something with that, and eventually I get it replaced with intercooler piping. Uh, ECU actually looks, god damn it. ECU looks totally fine over here, but I think I'm going to mount the Holly ECU inside the car. And this is probably one of my least favorite parts of the swap that they did. It's the relays are just zip tied here to the fuel rail, so. I absolutely hate four wheelers. So I would have mounted these over there somewhere, but they're gonna go away anyway, so that doesn't really matter anymore. So here's their like header, uh, where a majority of the splices into what would be the factory harness are done. And it just plugs right into this, so that's super nice. And this is their like can box. I think this is just for the air conditioning on this car. They have a little more uh, functionality than some of the newer cars. And over here, that's just all the factory Porsche stuff minus I think this is an AC wire. All in all, not a lot of ugly surprises under here, so I'm super grateful for that. So camera lights work out awesome for lighting up the engine bay. You can't see anything in this thing because everything's covered from the top. But uh, I thought this is pretty cool. I was wondering how the wiring was actually making it inside the car to the ECU, but it's actually using like these body connectors uh, to run in where the factory ECU was and that's why all the wiring so clean so that's really nice so I'm gonna sell all of this harness and everything so somebody looking to do a LS swap with uh, factory ECU uh, all this junk will be for sale I have no idea what I'm gonna ask for it yet I know it's pretty expensive to buy so I'll see what it costs new and kind of make a price based off of that I'm gonna have to press charges for how dirty this thing is so I got everything unplugged, which hasn't been super fun as this harness was clearly put onto this engine when the engine was out of the car, which makes the most sense by far. But there's like 4,000 zip ties everywhere and uh, the zip ties were clearly put on there when the engine was out of the car. So just getting the zip ties off has been a challenge. Uh, but at this point I have everything unplugged except for the oil pressure sensor, which is on the back of the intake. And I can't find a way to get my hand back there. But then I found this, as I was trying to like route the harness out, uh, this harness is under the intake, like just enough that it can't come out. Uh, so you can see it's super tight back there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the intake off. I could probably at least get this out with some creativity, I think. I don't know if I can get my hand to the oil pressure switch, but once the intake is off, then I can, it'm just going to make everything else easier. So why not just go ahead and do that now. 
and since this thing's such a pain in the ass to take off and i don't even know if it's going to come out honestly we'll figure that out once i figure out how to get to all these bolts uh, but at that point uh, i think i might just order a set of injectors so i don't have to take the intake off a second time So taking the intake off sucked significantly more than I was expecting it to. I ultimately uh, had to lower the motor, basically take this whole engine mount out, lower the motor down, and all of the bolts, you could get to them, but the problem is they're Allen head, so you can't, and you can't fit any type of like a ratchet back there, and they were just tight enough that you couldn't loosen them with your fingers. And you can only move the Allen head about this much with a normal wrench, so it just took forever to just to loosen them and then the bolts are you know 300 miles long which brought up the next problem is the intake actually needed to be lifted up but when you lift it up you can't lift it enough for the bolts to like come up high enough to where they're not trying to get stuck on everything and stuck in the threads and you can't fit your hands anywhere so uh, use some zip ties to hold them up and that did the trick. But what ultimately ended up being the most difficult and time consuming part is the engine harness was zip tied to the fuel line back here. And uh, from the top, the bottom, it was just physically impossible basically to get to the zip ties. Uh, so again, with a whole bunch of creativity and a whole bunch of wasted time, it's finally off. And it probably would have taken just as much time to pull the whole motor out. But uh, when I put it back together, I'll make it a little more serviceable. This one is the CPE harness for the LS in the 911. And the best part about it is these connectors plug into the body harness on the car. So there's almost no splicing at all. Like I said, I think it was one wire for the AC that ended up having to be spliced in. Uh, I really like this. Honestly, I didn't even know that this was like this, but I had a feeling it was. So I rolled the dice on eBay and bought a factory harness for the car and it does actually plug in. So I looked out there because it was for a slightly different model. So I thought I was going to do this before I took the car apart, but <laughs> there isn't room to fit your hands anywhere. So I'm going to start back probing that harness because uh, there's things I need to find like the starter signal wire. Uh, there's going to be a tack output. Coolant temp for the factory cluster, oil pressure for the factory cluster, and there's probably some like switch 12 volt wires and things like that. So I'll likely modify this harness to kind of work in conjunction with the HCR harness, and hopefully I can make everything work like using these and not having to run wires all through the damn car. Also, now that I got it all apart, ultimately those round connectors kind of plug into this, uh, but all of this other stuff that I wasn't really sure of is actually pretty simple. One of these is drive-by wire, one of these is OD2, and uh, this is like I said, AC stuff uh, that's not going to get used. We're just going to hardwire that stuff directly, build a sub-harness for it, and then that's just the original ECU. So other than back probing those harnesses and stripping that whole thing back so I can reuse it. Uh, the rest of it's going to be mostly just plugging in the HCR harness and there shouldn't be a whole lot of additional stuff that I really got to figure out. Oh, that's going to have fuel pump output and fans as well. So like all of my time is going to be spent uh, figuring that shit out, which I'm not looking forward to, but it could be worse.
slowly figuring out what's what and depinning things as I go. It's not a lot of wires remaining in this connector when we're done, but this one's going to have quite a few. And I got to figure out what's what still. A bunch of stuff came. I don't even remember what half of this stuff is. So the throttle pedal in the car doesn't plug into the Holly harness. I was just going to get another pedal and current performance sells this adapter uh, that just plugged right in. So uh, I still don't like the placement of the pedal, so I'll still fix that later. I just don't feel like dealing with it right now. So that was nice. And then also from there, I got a bunch of pigtails for the GM stuff that's not actually part of the engine harness. Like this is starter signal, alternator, AC, a couple of AC things. So handy to have. Uh, this is just some steam port fittings. Uh, the way that it's in the car right now is just kind of super ugly and going the opposite direction of where all the cool stuff is. So I'll do something there. This one's from Raceback. Uh, these are just a bunch of DTM connectors for a really small wire, like Tefcel wire. Uh, more. I love these things. And this is just a case of clear heat shrink tubing, which is nice for making labels. I have some here, but it's so old, it's almost got like a yellow tint to it. So I figured you get some new stuff. This stuff is from uh, Monkey Fab Garage, who is a sponsor of my course. So I ordered some material from them. I'm all out of uh, like big beefy wire. So this is just some black and red wire for like powers and grounds. I think it's like hundred feet of each. So all I have here is DR25, which I don't want to use for a lot of this stuff. So this is just braided sleeve, bigger braided sleeve, more braided sleeve, more. I think all the braided sleeve was just part of a kit. So now I have every size ever apparently. Oh no, here's more. These are DT connectors, so for a larger diameter wire, more, more, more. What the hell are these? Oh, these are for wiretap. Oh, those are more just to have some here, more so than for this car. Oh, this is all like SCL. Uh, should be four to one, right? It doesn't say on here, but this is a uh, adhesive lined heat shrink, which if you've never used this stuff, it'll change your life. Um, I actually have a decent amount of this here, but I know I'm out of some sizes, but I didn't feel like figuring out what sizes. So I just ordered every size. So now I have a whole bunch of each. And then, Oh, this is mostly like just some uh, ring terminals and things like that. I have probably all of this here, but if I'm being completely honest, it's just, I didn't feel like looking to see what I did and didn't have, and this came in a nice fancy case. So I'll take the stuff that I do have and transfer it over into the case. A bunch of different splices, ring terminals. So kits like that are always nice. So I've kind of started laying out the HDR harness and still kind of digging through the OEM harness. Uh, that's the other connector on the OEM harness. I don't think there's more than a few wires in this that I'm actually going to use. Endless amount of this really terrible tape that's on the OEM Porsche harness. My primary tuning tool. And then this is the LS harness that came out of it that I've been kind of back probing. So I've kind of been a raw dog in this whole installation so far. Like I don't have a, any type of Porsche documentation or any type of a wiring diagram. And the hardest part so far has been, here I'll kind of show you. 
So like, first of all, there's two of these style connectors and it's on this obnoxiously large like bracket thing. And everything was kind of like jammed over here. It's really dark. And it was like just super cluttered. So I got everything out of the way there. But the hardest part is getting anything through the firewall to the inside of the car because the grommet is like right here and you can't get to it from the inside of the car and you can't get to it from the outside of the car. So I actually pulled the tail light out. And you can see there's this hole here, which at that point I could get to the grommet enough to push it inside the car and then pull it through, which uh, was just a giant pain in the ass. At first I tried to like make a hole in the grommet to be able to feed stuff through, but it just, it was gonna take 3000 hours to actually uh, feed, feed anything through. There just wasn't a good way to do it cause you couldn't get straight on it. But now that the grommet is inside of the car, uh, here's the big bulky OEM connectors that I think I'm probably going to actually leave inside of the car now to make it less cluttery. And then like this whole part of the harness here, this is all just like zip tied up into that cluster of crap in the engine bay. Uh, so this doesn't need to be here anymore. And uh, the factory you see goes under here. I was hoping that like the fuel pump and AC relays and stuff were in this bulk of relays and fuses, but they're not uh, there down there. So my initial thought was since this is just, uh, you know, doesn't make any power turd, I was just going to use the triggers from the Holly to trigger the factory fuel pump relay. And then while I was at it, just do the fan relays. But the more and more I think about it, Eventually all that stuff's going to get changed out and it's going to make life easier not trying to backtrace it and then uh, getting to it under the dash is a nightmare. So I'm actually just going to run uh, my own relays for the fuel pump and I'll just run everything as if I'm going to power up two fuel pumps. So I'll have two relays, two fuels or two fuses rather. And then I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do solid state relays for the fans. Uh, these ones, to my understanding, have like a high speed and a low speed. And uh, at some point I'll probably switch over to PWM fans. So I'll just wire it accordingly now, more than likely. Uh, none of this stuff set in stone, I'm still kind of winging this. I get like five minutes a day to work on it, so it's been kind of rough. While we're on the topic of explaining things, you can see like this hose here. It's for the steam port, just looks awful. And uh, this is all kinked up. So we'll get rid of all that and just run something with aftermarket lines. Uh, I have this huge pet peeve with vacuum caps. So this is a vacuum cap, so probably pull the valve covers off and uh, weld these. Another pet peeve is, oh. so this is what we had for crankcase vent. Uh, it just looks super cheesy, so we'll get rid of that. Again, we'll probably weld that hole shut and weld some bre actual breathers onto the valve covers or like AN fitting so we can run a catch can. Uh, this vent here is just going to the intake. Again, looks super crappy. So uh, that looks like 8th inch MPT will probably thread into that. Uh, if so, I'll probably thread that, put a fitting there. And everything's super dirty, so we'll clean it all before we put it all back together. So I got this side of the engine bay super clean now. Now the harness will have to run through here, but we'll tuck it back behind this way. So we'll be able to mount some additional stuff over here. This oil pressure sensor here is impossible to get to with the intake on. So I'll probably put a fitting in there and run a line and remote mount it. Uh, that sensor is actually going to get rid of that altogether and run a holly sensor. Uh, but at least that way, if for whatever reason we need to get to it, we can. I like to ditch this water pump altogether because it's just ugly, but I'm not going to do that now. And same with these coolant hoses. I may or may not re relocate and reroute this stuff yet. So if I'm gonna do a water pump, then I'll redo this stuff later. So I just gotta make that decision. And as far as fueling goes, uh, this I'm 99% sure this just has like a Corvette filter on it. So for the time being, it might be okay. Well, not might be, it will be okay. But once we put some turbos on here, it won't. So again, I'm kind of torn if I'm going to mount external regulator and do like a traditional return style fuel system now, or just wait and do that while I'm doing all of the turbo stuff. Uh, truthfully, the hardest part of all of this so far other than uh, getting to that stupid grommet is like this stuff's all kind of boring and building the turbo kit 
is a, a thousand times more fun. So trying to not just start ripping it apart and building a turbo kit right now is kind of tough, but I need this to run naturally aspirated because I need to make a bunch of videos for it for my Holly training course. And that's kind of the primary purpose of this entire car. Speaking of the course, here's got all our booth control stuff set up. Single three port, single four port, dual three ports, and the high flow valves. So we'll go through all of that individually. So here on the intake, I'm not gonna be using this style of map sensor anymore. So we'll thread this hole and uh, use it for something else. Uh, this hose is the one that goes to the valley. Same deal, I'm not gonna use that anymore. So we'll probably cut this back, thread it. And this is another vacuum cap, which drives me nuts. So we'll cut that down and you guessed it, we'll thread that as well. So I just drilled it, tapped it. And right now I just have a push lock fitting, threaded in there. I'm going to put in with my fingers that apparently I can't take out with my fingers. But since I don't know the orientation of what's going to go where yet, I'll just put a uh, stainless pipe plug in there. And then I can just pull it out easily. So I'll do this one and this one. They're good to go. The two on the sides are 8th inch MPT and the top one is a quarter inch MPT. So instead of adding the breathers for the valve covers, I just kind of uh, repositioned them for now. And uh, I'll just run them to something. I'm going to do the AN fittings and the welding and everything and run them to a proper catch can once I do all the turbo stuff. Because no doubt wherever I put a catch can now is just going to end up being in the way of the turbo stuff. And I'll have to redo it and pulling the uh, valve covers and stuff off and drilling them and cleaning them and it's just gonna eat up a bunch of time that doesn't really need to happen right now and uh, i can get to the valve covers relatively easy with the even with the intake manifold on it so that shouldn't be too bad and this will give me an opportunity to just go ahead and plug in the coil harness and start actually running the harness through the car i actually so here's the coil harness See, it's real nice. Definitely a whole lot nicer than reusing the factory coil sub harness. Got some nice big beefy wiring. Head grounds. And each coil is labeled, which is nice. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in. I ran the cam and crank sensor wiring. And I'm gonna hold off on the injectors until I get some injectors because it's just too much work to take that intake off. Uh, I probably should have ordered them a week ago. I just kind of forgot. And I haven't actually filmed me doing much on this because 99% of everything so far has just been like taking things apart. And uh, it's not super exciting and uh, everything's so damn dirty on this car that it makes it tough holding this camera. I don't want to get it all dirty too. So once I get past the bulk like boring nonsense then we can start being a little more uh, creative with the video side of this. The somewhat ironic part about this is a lot of this stuff, uh, you probably can't read that, but it's labeled uh, passenger side, driver side, but the engine's in the car backwards, so uh, all of that stuff's kind of reversed. But uh, this side is plugged in and it fits real nice. The unfortunate part is this harness is super nice, but these coil harnesses are probably like the only things that you're gonna get to see. And uh, you can ground the harness to the car next to you. So we'll probably trim these down and re-terminate a connector on there. Um, now where you would traditionally ground the cylinder heads on this, like you cannot get to that in the car at all. So I'm not 100% sure where I'm gonna ground it yet. I'm gonna run the harness in or plug the coils and everything in and put you know these the primary connectors uh, where those are kind of going to sort of be and then I'm going to raise the car up and see what my options are as far as uh, Connecting the ground wires. I did happen to notice uh, Just a minute ago that one of these coils is kind of the bastard child and not the same as the rest So I'm going to try and hunt down a matching coil as well. This harness is super nice. We got basically power ground switch 12 volt And we're gonna have a tack output and a fuel pump output 
And that's really all there is to it. Still a little bit torn. I might not even use the actual fuel pump output. We might just do a, a more traditional output. That way I can get it to prime how I want uh, rather than being kind of stuck with what Holly gives us. This is actually the OEM ECU mount, which I uh, modified for the Holly ECU. In a perfect world, it would have actually gone underneath this plate, but I need to be able to access the ECU on a pretty regular basis. And it technically kind of fit with maybe some spacers or washers underneath it, uh, but getting the harness to it and then accessing it later uh, just wasn't going to be an option. So it's going to go on top and I'll figure out a solution to cover it up later. But uh, these, this relay and fuse block here is um, actually bolted into like a, one of the holes for the original ECU. I've made new holes for the Dominator. But you can see how nice this lays out, especially compared to like the factory Holly harness. So I think, I gotta double check a couple things, but I think it's about time to start actually trying to run this harness through the car. Routing an engine harness like through a firewall or, I guess it's still a firewall on this, but it's one of like the worst parts of doing an install like this, is you usually don't have a good place to do it and it's small. And in the case of this car, it's pure hell because you can't even reach your hands where you got to feed it through. So to make the harness, a little more manageable. I just put like a few small pieces of electrical tape. Uh, so like now you can see it's just more manageable. And I'm hope, as you can see, this harness is like 140 feet longer than what it needs to be like for this particular car. Cause you know, the engine's right here and the ECU goes right there. So it is way shorter than a normal car. Now granted, it does have to kind of like snake around a little bit or whatever, but I'm hoping that I can just feed through what I need to into the engine bay and then all of the like excess stuff can uh, kind of keep that inside of the car so there's just not a whole bunch of stuff taking up space in the engine bay as there is really no space at all. So every inch counts on something like this. Uh, if you do the electrical tape deal, make sure you use tape that doesn't leave a bunch of nasty residue. So the part I was dreading about this the most is finally complete. We actually got the harness uh, from the inside of the car to the outside of the car. And uh, I don't know, unfortunately, fortunately, it doesn't really matter, but my thought was to keep the excess harness inside of the car, but the uh, ignition, like cam and crank plug um, so then the, the harness is coming in from the passenger side of the car, but that connector is on the driver's side of the car. So in order to connect that, the bulk of the harness is going to have to be in the engine bay. But I think if I route it back behind the engine and kind of snake it through, I don't think it's going to be that bad. And then also for the injectors to plug in, the same thing's got to happen. That's the Canton oil pan. And the coolest part about this whole deal is well, definitely not the coolest part, but what's super convenient is you can take this oil pan off in three minutes. So when it comes time to do oil drain lines, oh, that won't be a big deal, unlike a lot of the front engine cars. Here's the trans adapter, uh, flywheel, and uh, then it charge extra for the dirt on the transmission. So crank sensor is in place. Uh, again, to have to ex get a extension harness for the cam sensor since it's in the front. And here's the Porsche uh, oil pressure sending unit. It's kind of doofy and big. I'll probably move this up on top, I think. And uh, I don't want to have 700 things teed off here when we need oil supply for the turbos. And um, there's a oil pressure sensor plug. Obviously, can't plug that in until I put the sensor in place. O2 is going to be here. And I have an NTK sensor. I actually have two NTK sensors, but I think what I'm going to do is run Holly O2 here. And then I might do an external, like true lambda meter on this side. Again, just kind of for course related stuff. Um, so V6 300 has the ability to kind of look at lambda, but it's a conversion off of air fuel ratio so it's not true lambda so it'd be pretty easy to kind of skew those numbers 
I think it would be kind of cool in this to just have the ability to see what the actual true lambda is. And at that point, you're kind of monitoring both banks. So yeah, you wouldn't have like closed loop control off of both banks like you would if you ran both sensors to the Holly. But I'm perfectly okay with uh, air fuel off of one bank. It's actually a little bit interesting too, because if you put 10 different air fuel meters in a car, you'll probably get 10 different air fuel readings. So that's what I always think is funny when people are like, the car has to be at 11.5 or it's going to explode and, you know, 11.6 is too lean, but, you know, 11.5 on, on which of the meters because they're all going to read a little differently. Oh, I'm also not sure if there is a grommet on this side of the car or on the driver's side of the car rather for like running the harness and everything through. But if I would have gone that direction, which it would have basically involved taking everything apart and uh, the whole cooling system out of the car and everything else, like it just totally was impractical. But if I would have done that and gone through on the other side of the car, it would have made routing the harness significantly easier. So I don't know, I guess if you're doing one of these and uh, you got the engine out or whatever, might want to consider going that way with it. Here's $400,000 worth of O2 sensors. I can't open that with one hand, but you know what an O2 sensor looks like. And here's the uh, the O2 harness is actually kind of like split and broke out separate from the rest of the harness. So we'll route that down and uh, we'll have a bunch of extra wire. So what's nice about that though is if I wanted to go over onto this side of the car, it would totally make it. But it's going to make more sense to go to this side, I think. Maybe it'll make more sense to go to this side with this O2 and then that way routing that O2 with the external controller a little bit easier. So that's the problem with this stuff. There's too many damn decisions to make. So I actually went ahead and did the hard work now. So if I do decide to go and put something else in it, it'll be easy later. So I ran the O2 harness all the way to the other side of the car and now it's over here on the driver's side. So, like I said, once I go to put something else on the other side, it'll be way easier. I thought this was funny. I just happened to notice that this tire is flat. These are brand new tires. Ow. This is a good indication of basically how my life works. But I don't know how well you can see it. Don't look it's focusing. Um, take my word for it that there's a, uh, a nail in the tire. So that'll just be one more thing to take care of. I This thing desperately needs brakes. So I'll probably pull it off of this lift and put it on this lift and go ahead and put brakes on it and properly roll the fenders since I just hood rolled them enough to make the wheels work on it previously. So an endless amount of stuff to do. So inside the car, I don't know. These technically can go back out in the engine bay, engine bay but it's just going to kind of be big and clunky, especially since there's only a couple wires coming off of here. So I might just like run from here out into the engine bay with some like DTM connectors or something. I'll figure that out. This is IEC and TPS. I ran these back inside the car since this car is drive by wire. So they're just kind of like going to be out of the way. I haven't decided if I'm going to run the power tap in the kind of standard IO harness into the engine bay or use this for the stuff that I need inside of the car, like, or either inside or in the front of the car. You know, we need some sort of like a two-step button and probably a multi-position switch, fuel pumps, radiator fans, and all that. So it might just make more sense to use these to go forward and then can go directly from the ECU back. Um, all of this stuff needs to be hooked up, which this actually looks like more than it really is. I need to plug this stuff in. And if we come back out to the engine bay, uh, these are the injector injector wires. So I don't know like where this is going to lay exactly until I put the intake back on. And same thing with these. I'm going to try and see what my options are for these ground wires. What do we have here? Fuel pressure, MAP, and IET. I haven't mounted any of those sensors yet, but they're all going to be kind of like in this area. So I'll wait till I mount the sensors to like kind of permanently route these, but uh, realistically you almost can't see the harness at all 
So it turned out really nice. And uh, I don't know what's up with that red hose back there. Uh, and even though you can't see it, it drives me nuts. So we'll have to replace that with something black. And just because you can't get to anything, there wasn't a lot of good options as far as like mounting the stuff nicer. So assuming I keep this thing long enough to ever need to pull the engine out of it, now that the harness is all like routed and I know where it all goes, then at that point I can get a little fancier with kind of how everything is, is back there. So on something like this, you gotta be real careful with heat because you know it's like basically an inferno back here. It doesn't get airflow like a front engine car does. So uh, the main thing was make sure this harness isn't gonna melt itself. So I wasn't 100% sure what I was gonna want or need when I was putting this together. So I just kind of ordered a little bit of everything. And this, I gotta run through the car. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain, but this is the drive-by wire harness. This is the main power harness, which I was absolutely dreading trying to run this through the front firewall as the battery is uh, in the front trunk, frunk, whatever it's called. But getting uh, through the firewall on the back of the car was such a disaster, I figured going through the front was gonna be torture as well, but there's actually like a perfectly easy to access grommet. So this is gonna be easy. So I'm pretty happy about that. So in the front of the car, uh, I have two radiator fans and one fuel pump. And I wanna just run the wiring out there for a, a second fuel pump or a meth pump or I don't know, just, just gonna pump it so that if I decide I wanna add something else, uh, it's already there and I don't really have to do anything. So I totally forgot. I had this, which is a high current four output uh, solid state relay. It's internally, let's call it fused or whatever, circuit protection, however you wanna word that. So this is just gonna be nice and clean, be able to power all of that stuff. And then if down the road we decide we wanna pulse something, we can do that as well. And this, I actually didn't order with everything else. I just kinda of had this for customer stuff, but I could just make this, but it's already here, so why not? And this is just our input-output harness, but it has four outputs. So we'll just run all four of these outputs right to this. And that'll make that nice and clean. And then for the inputs, probably since we're everything gonna run forward, we'll see what we'll do. Probably do like a AC button, trans brake, or I guess this has a clutch in it, so uh, it'd just be like a two-step button, and then like a multi-switch, multi-position switch, and I'll figure something out to do with the other input. Might just keep it up front for a random button or something like that, but, uh, so we'll just, I guess this answers that question I was trying to figure out previously if I was going to keep that input-output harness that essentially plugs into this, if I was gonna run it forward in the car or backwards, so now that this is just all, this will be everything right here. Nice and clean and simple, so we'll run that forward. So here's where the battery usually goes. And uh, there's just this super convenient, I can stick my whole finger in there. A grommet to go into the firewall, so that is awesome. And I really hate this fuse thing they got going on here, so I don't know if I'll do it now or later. It's super easy to get to, but I'm gonna put something a little nicer here. Uh, this is for the electronic power steering, which is mounted here, which again, there's a perfect uh, place right there to, to run wiring through. Connect directly to battery terminals. One of the things I see overlooked the most, guys will literally like connect. This is two inches away from the end of the, where the wiring is actually gonna connect and they still, run this to the alternator or to the starter or to the kill switch and not to the battery. Definitely always run that to the battery. And on this car, it would be a million percent easier to basically run it anywhere other than the battery. The battery is like the furthest point away from uh, where the ECU is mounted. And it's gotta go through the whole damn car and everything else, but we're still just gonna do it right. So the original throttle cable, and now the drive-by wire actually goes like under here. It's not just under the carpet, there's like an actual like channel. And uh, you can see here, I think the throttle cable was like in there or something. Uh, but 
it, it goes like under here so you're not stepping on it and smashing it and whatnot. And uh, the unfortunate part is the the connector for the actual throttle pedal is too big for that opening. And then the ECU end is way too big for that opening. So, ow! So here's the, the connector. And you can see it's like relatively like rectangle-ish compared to you know, something like this that's more of a square. I thought maybe the rectangle would fit, but it wouldn't. So uh, don't tell Holly this. They'll probably send me to jail, but I'm gonna depin the connector at the ECU header and route the wiring through the car where it needs to go, and then I'll repin it uh, once it gets where it needs to go. Do not cut or modify. I figure since I'm gonna put it back exactly the way that it was, it just does not count as modifying. You can see now that uh, this is gonna be a whole lot easier to route through the car. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm gonna make running this side of the harness through the opposite end of the car even easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll run this through, run that through, and then that way I can repin everything just basically right at the ECU, and we should be back in business. So after lifting the carpet up and, and looking, there's actually like multiple channels. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't like really just snake the wiring through like I thought I was gonna be able to. Uh, so I definitely lift the carpet up, and then there's some uh, channels to go through. And uh, here's the Holly connector, which is rectangle. And then uh, the pedal, which is more of a square. And so that's where the adapter thing comes in. Should give a little bit of extra length too, which is nice. Maybe it'll fit down there, we'll see. Uh, I can't plug that in with one hand, but I already tried it, it fits. So I was expecting getting the wiring through the firewall to be the hard part, but uh, just routing everything through the car is, uh, it's not like the worst thing in the world, just super uncomfortable and hard to get to, and I'm sweating like crazy now, but uh, the wiring, run for the uh, the main power and ground that needs to go to the battery drive-by-wire stuff is run now i gotta run the input output stuff and a couple other odds and ends i'm trying to kind of plan things a few steps ahead so uh, when i go to add things it won't be a disaster later on so it's getting there I basically used Injector dynamics injectors on every car I've had since injector dynamics came out. So I figured I'd keep it consistent with this one uh, These are 1050x and I actually took the intake manifold home and pressure washed it just because it was super dirty So I'm gonna throw the injectors in and try and set the intake manifold back on the car Today has just been the most boring day of taking care of stuff that is not exciting at all, but you know if you don't do it, it's gonna bite you in the ass. So this line, it's a fuel line. I don't know how well you can tell, but it's kinked. And these fittings aren't put together properly. And it just, the whole thing just sucks. Uh, so this is nothing fancy, but just put together a higher quality line with some better fittings and been taking uh, zip ties off of like brake booster lines and replacing everything with proper uh, hose clamps and stuff just so once this thing has a turbo on it we're not blowing lines off like that since you can't get to any of the stuff with the intake on since running wiring through this car is such a royal pain in the ass this is just going to go up under the dash so it'll never be used or seen again, but just in case I decide I need to add something later. I have 5 volt and sensor ground. I have individually fused 12 volt wires and then a handful of extra just inputs and outputs that aren't pinned on the other side yet as I'll just be able to connect them when I figure out like what I need. So essentially it's like my own power tap harness that's just going to be up on the front side of the car and then I'll have something similar in the rear as well. 
whole bunch of extra time right now, but it'll be invaluable in the future if I ever need any of it. A couple more things I sort of forgot about is since the ECU is so far away from the front of the car, I need a really long communication cable and a really long can extension harness to plug into the dash. Technically, I could have used this and run a splitter, but I'll just run this since it's there, why not? I think these are the last two things that I gotta run from the back of the car to the front of the car. Thank God that's gonna be over. That's the worst part of this whole thing so far. Just we're using some old bolts for some grounds, but modified. Well, they both look like this. Cut this down a little bit just so we can get a little bit better of a connection on the ring terminals. A little tedious stuff like this just eats up so much time. You guys are just gonna have to put up with my air conditioning so I don't die, but in case you were wondering why I did that with the bolts. So with that shoulder on there, it was kind of just all up on the ring terminal itself. So it fits way better this way. All right, this is the longest, most boring video ever. So I'll make another one kind of going over everything, condensing it, whatnot. But basically where it stands is everything is a majority of the way back together. There's still a couple loose ends to tidy up. I got to make an intake. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for that yet. I refuse to put that 90 degree thing back on there. Has a three and a half bar map sensor, even though it's naturally aspirated. We'll put some turbos on it soon. Fuel pressure, oil pressure. I have wired the crap for the factory gauges. I just have not pinned them back into the original harness yet, but that's just four or five wires. That's pretty easy. And the hardest part of this whole thing was trying to figure out the starter signal, like from the factory key. Yeah, there is no factory ECU in this car anymore. And then it turns out that the factory ECU is in charge of uh, making the starter signal work. So that was a huge pain in the ass. Uh, once I figured that out, I used a dominator to trigger a handful of different relays uh, from the you know factory relays. And now the starter signal works. So let's. this is basically where we're at right now. And I'd love to uh, sit here and pretend like this is the first start, but the very first time I bumped the key, probably like what felt like 20 RPM, the thing fired right up and idled great. So uh, it's kind of anticlimactic, but I was pretty happy that it ran, obviously. Made it this far thanks for watching this super boring video and now that all the boring stuff's out of the way we can start having some fun and make some cool videos with this thing